ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Benediction Gamer, aka okay, Pokeseb's back again with another video. And today, something a little bit different. Um, so today, we're going to be doing a surprise trade challenge. Uh, so, what this is going to involve is trading a full box of Pokemon, um, seeing what Pokemon we get, and then building a composition from that team. Um, I probably will end up making multiple videos from this one, but for now, we'll, we'll just be making the uh, one composition. So, I'm going to pick my favourite six from the box, make a team from that, and then say go pay uh, free games online and see what sort of win rate we can achieve so i hope you enjoy this one guys and as always keep it holy and so without further ado let's get into a quick montage of all the trades before we have a look at what we managed to receive and see what sort of team we're going to pick from that And so that concludes the surprise trade segment. So let's look at the Pokemon that we got. And to be fair, it looks like, yeah, we've done pretty well. Some very nice Pokemon here. So I think we're going to be able to make a nice team composition for this one. But as I say, we'll probably try to extend this one into um, a few videos, uh, potentially even five. Where I'll end up making five team compositions from the full 30 Pokemon that we've received. Um, but for now, I say we're going to start off with the one team. Um, we're going to go play free games online and see what sort of win rate we can get. Looking, yeah, say looking through there, um, some some very nice ones um, we could potentially be adding to a team. Um, I think, of course, we're probably going to have to look to try and uh, get that gimme goal in action. Um, running it's a golden go, El Diablo himself. I uh, always complain about it, so uh, yeah, can't beat him, join him. Let's get it in there, guys. Um, Charcadet, also a very nice one to pick up. Um, got the ability to, to change that into an Armor Rouge or a Cellar Rouge. And that will add a, a lot of ability to uh, the team, especially, um, well, unfortunately don't have the Indeedee to pair with it, but still some good Pokemon to go in there. Um, Giraffe Rig, it's going to be a nice one to add to the team, especially with all that into a um, Farafa Rig, and then we run the um, ability Armor Tail, so we're protected from priority attacks, I think that's going to be the best one to go for. And then, last one I'm just going to talk about quickly was just the last Pokemon we received. I thought it was a nice one to receive, a uh, funny one to end it on. It was a Deli Bird, pretty useless, but all the same, I love it. Um, so that's uh, yeah, that's the Pokemon that we got traded. And without further ado, let's go ahead and look at the six team, that, uh, six Pokemon I picked for the team, and the move sets and items that we went for. So getting into the team breakdown, looks so, like uh, position one we're going to go with a Lycan Rock. Um, with the ability Tough Claws, which can be boosting attacks that make direct contact. Uh, and the option for running Lycan Rock um, essentially is to be getting that Accelerator Rock, so we've got a nice priority attack. Rock Sides, so we can put out a uh, nice split damage onto the enemies, potentially be getting a flinch as well. Um, and then I think, yeah, Crunch is going to be useful um, against a lot of Pokemon running in current meta and counter, potentially does um, a nice bit of damage as well. And looking in there, uh, the main stats are set to in this team, and the guy that's been causing uh, a lot of issues for the opponent, I hope, is going to be our Drift Blim. 
So we've previously seen against an R Believer the, uh, what sort of uh, option Strength Sap gives and the annoyance that it can create for an enemy. So I think we're going to be looking to run that. One attacking move we're going to be running um, Shadow Ball. Let's say if you're running Status Settle, you at least want to be running one attack on it. We're going to be Tailwind um, to obviously get our speed up on our whole team. So I think it's going to be useful for our Golden Go. And then Willow Wisp uh, to be cutting any of their physical attackers in half and also get chip damage over time. Um, then the obvious Mouse Garada, running protein, focus sashed it, um, and then obviously, yeah, we can change change our typing um, each turn, it needs to be, especially if we're winning that speed matchup, which may uh, give us some defensive protection, um, which also allows us to save the Terra for a different Pokemon, which is nice. Um, and Golden Goat, yeah, the Devil himself, uh, you're going to see why I hate this Pokemon. But, yeah, yeah, well, I hate it when one is against me, I don't hate it when I use it. Um, and then, yeah, say so for Rigoraf, uh, we've gone for, for the Iron Tail ability, um, nice to protect ourselves from priority attacks. So I think most of the time we're going to be looking to lead with Drift Blim and Frigoraf where it seems viable, especially as we're using Frigoraf as a bit of a screen setter where we can. And then to round off the team, we're going to be using Gallade. Um, we had a choice, I say, with the routes where we could have gone for the Gardevoir or the Gallade. Um, in this choice, because we've used um, Gardevoir in one of our previous challenges, I think we're going to go for the Gallade, switch it up a little bit. So that's the final part of the team. Um, and then just one final uh, disclosure, just to clarify. So these um, six Pokemon, outside of the Drift Blim, none of them were actually from the Pokemon that was surprise traded to me. Um, I tried to save myself some time. Uh, from going through the, the, the EV training um, and bot having to bottle cap everything so these um, the remaining five or five Pokemon that have already been previously EV trained but as I say uh, we'll have only ever end up evolving the other Pokemon anyway so um, I think it still counts in this challenge but you guys can let me know down below should I have had to use the ones that were surprise traded to me or is it okay to just use a version of that Pokemon but without further ado, let's get into uh, the first gameplay. This first game you're going to see is a bit of a bonus game. Um, you're going to see the, the absolute destruction of Golden Go. But without further ado, let's get into that one. And I hope you enjoy, guys. And as always, keep it holy. And so jumping into the bonus game now. So coming up against a Bomb Snow and a Glalie. Uh, due to the team competition going up, I thought, yeah, best to lead with the Brugarath and the Golden Go's chance we're going to be able to get our attacks off. We're going to be winning the speed matchup. And we can set off a, uh, a light screen or a reflect uh, to decrease the damage that we're going to be taking. Um, should put us in a good stead. But as I say, you're going to see in this one uh, the absolute devastation that a Golden Go can cause. Um, and why, for me, yeah, it's just... <laughs> I don't know who had the, uh, the idea to design this thing, but they ain't my friend. Let me tell you that. So we're debating going for the Terra here. Was it... Uh, would it offer us uh, defensive ability or was it better to just go for the attack? Uh, in the end we get opted to go for the attack. Also quicker, we don't have to watch the uh, cinematic. As we see, yeah, uh, coming with one make it rain there and absolutely devastated the team. And then we're going to be able to get a reflect up onto the Frigoraf and that's going to put us in good stead for whatever's coming into the field now. What we're going to see, is that going to matter? Uh, are we still just going to be winning that speed matchup and potentially doing enough damage with we'll this make it rain? Um, we've gone down one stage on the special attack, which may mean we're not producing enough damage now, but um, we're going to have to wait and see. Now, we are choice spec on this Golden Go as well, so we are going to be uh, doing boosted damage. So we do have to take that into uh, consideration, but um, I say most, a lot of people are going to be either be choice specking. Uh, their golden go or potentially wise glasses so he's, he's always going to look to have boost attack and um, we see that you know what did that game take me it took me two attacks uh, i managed to win a game absolutely no skill involved <laughs> just click and hit but that's the bonus game guys <laughs> let's get to the proper games now go into game one um, and let's see how we can get done in this challenge so jumping into game one now, uh, let's hope this is a little bit more challenging than the uh, previous game we've just seen. So we're going to be leading out with a Drift Blim and a Fogograph. I say this is probably going to be my uh, main lead where I can see it into the game. Um, I think it was probably the better way to go, but we're going to see how this one goes. How does the speed matchup go um, and are we going to be taking damage um, from that horrible, horrible <laughs> mouse hold? Um, so I think because that probably best to lead with a will-o-wisp into the mouse hole try and cut its attack rather than leading with 
the Tailwind, I think that's better than two stats moves to be going for, so let's look to go for that and we'll try and get a Reflect up as well, further lower that attack. But we see Population Bomb coming in from the Mouse Hold, it looks like it may be doing too much damage, that's a fair bit of chip with each hit. So he's probably not going to need the whole 10, um, as we see, yeah, looks to be taking down the Frigger off there. Not the best start for us, uh, we managed to take a Reflect on, but we know he should be getting this Willow Wisp off now, um, I think that's puts in good stead, we've still got our Sweepers to come in. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem that we've lost the Ferrigarath. Fingers crossed, uh, yeah, we're now going to be able to come in with the sweepers and get enough damage in. Um, we've also just got the strength up to uh, take further attack away from their mouse hold. Uh, I think next turn we'll be looking to potentially try and get that tailwind up if we can, boost our speed even further. Um, I hope that we, we're winning speed matches up for the, the majority of this game, um, potentially all of it depending on how the game goes. Well, look, we're going to go for, for a strength sap there, um, just in case I think we're hopefully going to be putting out enough damage after this first make it rain um, to take out that mouse hold. And we'll see they're just switching out the mouse hold there. So, potentially are unfortunate for us, um, but I think, say, getting the burn onto it, I think we've done our job. So, we'll see how this one goes. Um, protect onto the Indeedee is a little bit unfortunate, so we're going to be taking a special attack drop now after using this attack and not getting the damage onto it first turn a little bit unfortunate and um, we see not the greatest bit of chip onto Umbreon but chip nonetheless and we know we're not going to be doing too much damage to the Umbreon uh, with our Drift Blim due to the fact that we're running Shadow Ball as our attack um, but we, we can at least be putting in strength saps getting our health back up um, so that if they are targeting the Drift Blim that uh, hopefully we can uh, yeah say survive for a reasonable amount of the game with this Drift Blim um, and I think yeah that's another option that we've got with the Drift Blim is just, just trying to um, bide out time as much as we can so we can keep sweepers for as long as we can um, for we can bring them in at the most optimum times um, to put out damage um, so we can see yeah bring up a Tailwind now um, so if you, if this Drift Blim does now go down we've, we've got our um, Mouse Yarada coming in and should be winning speed matchup. Um, hopefully, puts in good stead uh, to see this game through. Uh, but say, it's, it's come down to uh, can we get enough damage um, off onto these two Pokemon now uh, with our Gimme Gimme Go? And it is a questionable one. Um, so at this point, the best move to go for potentially is I'm thinking maybe do we do we Willow Wisp into the Indeedy to get a little bit of extra damage, or do we just go for the Strength Sap? Um, to ensure that we're getting our Drifting back on health um, and then we're going to try and switch out our Gimme Ghoul uh, save it for later on in the game if needs be bring our Lycan Rock in because I think it's going to have a good chance of surviving this turn um, but we're just going to see how this one goes but Protect coming in from the Ndidi so that's at least uh, brought us a little bit of damage that we're not going to be taking so I'm feeling fairly confident that the switching wasn't a bad play at this point and um, we see HP coming back up onto our Drift Blim, which is very nice, but it uh, looks like umbron has gone for a similar place. We've gone for a Moonlight and oh, a lot of health coming back in there, which is um, rather annoying. So we've taken those um, special attack drops and the Umbreon. It's now managed to heal, but I say that's why we've switched out the Gimme Ghoul. Although, I, to, to be honest, I, I'm actually unsure as to whether it entirely gets, um, if, it, if it resets at that point. Um, I meant to check. However, I didn't. But uh, yes, yeah, so now going to offer us the ability to put out split damage onto both enemies with both Pokemon. If we can switch Gimmick all in um, and not take too much damage, it did look like previously they weren't really attacking um, the the uh, Drift Blim slot. So I, I feel fairly confident that Gimmick all should survive this turn. So we're coming with a Rock Slide now. Um, fingers crossed, we're going to be getting a Flinch here as well. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be the case. Side shot coming in on Lycan Rock. Not sure what damage this is going to be doing. Pretty hefty damage, which is unfortunate. Um, but I feel yeah, we're going to be winning the speed matchup next game. And I'm running the priority move Accelerock Rock on Lycan Rock. We should at least be getting uh, an attack off at this point. So let's come in with a Make It Rain. I feel like this probably should be enough damage. Debating do we do we go for the terrestrialization there, but again, um, I think it could be a negative one for us, especially if the Umbreon managed to get a snarl off, uh, should do a fair bit of chip damage to us. So at this point, yeah, um, we'll go, go rock slide. 
and um, hope that say we're, we're putting enough damage um, and at least we hit our rock slide as well because you never know how that's going to go but yeah it looks to uh, be getting damage into oh I managed a critical hit even better even better so I think we probably have got enough damage to be taking out this Umbreon now fortunately indeed he's still going to be up on the field due to the protect but uh, I believe the psychic field should be coming out at this point so if there's an armor region their team is um, going to be yeah, less effective coming into the field now um, unfortunately our tailwind is down but I think we're probably still going to be winning the speed much up so we, we, I think in this time we're probably going to look to go for an Acelerock potentially onto the Ndidi um, hoping that puts enough damage off um, failing that uh, we should hopefully get enough chip off of the make it rain um, and yeah whew. Well, hopefully yeah, at that point we'll finally get the Ndidi off the field, um, but I've, I've gone against it in the end. I think um, based off earlier calculations, I think we may have enough uh, damage off the Make It Rain onto the Ndidi. So we're going to um, yeah, say, ho hope that that was the case and I've made the calculation right. So we're going to go for the Accelerock into the Sylveon. Um, in that case, if it's sashed, uh, at least we've broken a sash. And we see we have pr pretty nice damage actually off that Accelerock, a little bit more than I was expecting. And yes, um, Make It Rain has come in, and that's put us in good stead to actually finish this game with an Accelerock, I believe, next turn. At least uh, finish the Sylveon, should I say. High Voice coming in now, though, and um, that's going to take us out. So unfortunately, actually, we're not going to be able to get that Accelerock off. But I'm going to come in with our Meowska Rider now, I um, believe. Well, it's questionable if we're winning a speed matchup against the, the Sylveon and Mouscarada. We don't have Mouscarada in the team. I didn't pick Mouscarada this time. I went with um, Lycan Rock, didn't I? I've been saying Mouscarada this whole time because I uh, yeah expected to bring it this game. It wasn't one I brought it. But coming back in with the um, Mouse Hard, this could be questionable for us. Uh, so I say, I think for me it comes down to the speed matchup against the Sylveon. As long as I'm winning that and I'm keeping. Um, my, my, my gimme all up I think we should be in all right stead um, but we are limited on attacks now um, so we're not going to be able to put in a, um, a damage move off our drim, drift blim which can be slightly awkward um, so we're going to actually yeah, look to tear up at this point so uh, hyper voice, both hyper voice and population bomb are not going to be effective so if they've gone for either of those um, that's going to be nice for us so a tidy up coming on to uh, the mouse hole, trying to get a little bit of that attack stat back that's had cut but I don't think it's going to be enough, um, especially with me coming in. I believe I'm going to come in with the strength sap now, and we're just going to be trying to cut that attack and keep the health back up on the drift boom. Um, and as I say, we can't be putting an attack into the mouse hold currently because we're only running shadow ball, and that's not going to be able to hit it. So it puts us in a slight bit of a awkward situation. And I say, I now do believe we're out of PP on our make it rain. So uh, yeah. <laughs> This is one of them occasions where I definitely should have used those about 200 PP, PP ups I have. But at this point I'm hoping uh, yeah, it's going to produce um, struggle potentially. Um, and well, let's just go for a tailwind just because I see that's about the only option we've got to go for us. Um, so we'll see how this one goes but yeah, confident we're going to see this one out uh, as long as we stall out turns. That burn will come off. But looks like they didn't want the, f the heat and uh, they ran from it. So. Game 1 victory, fantastic. Let's get to Game 2 now and see how we get on in this one. I'm jumping into Game 2 now and let's see, can the win streak continue? Uh, looks like we've been coming up uh, against a little bit of a difficult lead, Don Dozo and a Brute Bonnet. I haven't played too much against Brute Bonnet, so it'll be interesting to see what this can put out. So I'm thinking from this lead, um, probably best to be putting up a Reflect and trying to go for a Will-O-Wisp. So hopefully we can try and land this. Um, we'll, we'll see uh, what option our uh, opponent goes for. And well, ah, well, so it looks like it's coming up with a protect. Um, so unfortunately, not going to be able to hit the Willow Wisp in there just yet. Um, but hopefully, we should have a chance to get it in there next turn. But it does mean this has uh, prolonged our um, ability to get the Tailwind up. And it looks like it's a case that we should have probably gone for Tailwind on the first turn. Definitely should have gone for Tailwind on the first turn, especially now that we've been spored. So this does, uh, yeah, definitely makes it problematic. Um, are they running Dream Eater? Do we need to switch out? Questions, questions, questions. Um, based on their lineup, 
I felt it was probably actually most beneficial to um, keep my drift limb in. Um, and just a quick one to explain the uh, the nickname Die 2. Uh, I have no idea, guys. I didn't actually mean to put it in there. I think I was trying to call it something else. Um, I actually messed up and clicked it, and then I couldn't change it. So Die 2 it is. But yeah, I um, think it's more beneficial to keep the, uh, the drift limb at the moment. So that's the uh, play we're going to go for. Pull and puff onto the Frigograph. A little bit annoying. Um, not too much damage in the order up, absolutely nothing, so fantastic gain that reflect up was very nice. And a little bit of chip damage out from our self hyper voice. Um, it's nice, we, we want to try and get as much chip damage on the Dondozo as we can before the, uh, the sweeps come into the play. Um, so, so we're going to keep Drift Limb on the field for now. So, um, the, this game was fairly reliant on um, getting set up by these two. So we're going to see how this one goes for us. Um, looks like they're going to be switching out to Tatsugiri now. Hopefully Driftlim is going to be able to wake up. Otherwise, uh, yeah, this could start going south. But I say hopefully that Reflect is putting up uh, enough of a damage decrease uh, for the moment. Hopefully, uh, yeah, if we Driftlim's not awake this turn, I think we will look to switch into a uh, sweep next turn perhaps. Although here's a good chance of waking up next turn. But yeah, so finger, fingers crossed uh, we get it open now and it, it wasn't a bad play to uh, keep it in the field and keep the sweeps for later on. So we'll see the uh, Don Dozo switching to a Terra play and let's see where we go. Oh, so wake up now, Nat, 200 IQ. Let's get the Willow Wisp in there, cut that attack down and uh, we should be sitting fairly pretty in this game and we know we're going to be getting a little bit more chip damage onto the Don Dozo as well, which is fantastic. Coming with an order up now, but... We're not worried about the order up too much, it's not doing the greatest bit of damage. Getting the attack raised, but we cut your attack already with the, uh, the burn onto you, so Willow Wisp again doing a fantastic job in this game. Um, I'm, I'm quite liking the uh, this utility drift blim that I'm running at the moment. Qu quite a nice uh, move set on it. And especially as uh, we're now going to be able to go in um, with strength saps as well. That's the question, do we want to be going in with a strep sap, um, or at this point do we feel that we've put in enough damage that we uh, could be going shadow ball when we feel like it. Now obviously we need to get our tailwind in, because I say we don't, potentially should have gone on the first turn, we prolonged it a while, but we, we were doing okay for now, and um, Tom Dozo's speed is not something we have to worry about for now. So we've gone for a twin beam just to see uh, sort of what damage should it put out in comparison to the hyper voice. Um, looked to be not as much, but still chip damage all the same. And I say yeah, I think I think the uh, the lead has definitely done their part now and definitely keeping the, the drift blip in to um, ensure this setup was the right play if you ask me. But we're going to see how it goes. Um, I think we're going to be getting the Don Dozo down, so it's just going to come down to how does. How do we match up against the uh, the Tatsugiri and the Pokemon that they have remaining? Um, I believe Bro Brute Bonnet um, is still to come in. And I think that there may be a uh, fourth Pokemon that we haven't seen. So Order Up coming in finally managed to uh, get Frigor off of the field. We can be getting another attack boost but it's not going to matter for now. Uh, it looks like this could be a new Don Dozo and it does look to be the case. So yeah, fantastic setup from uh, the leads there. Rigoraph, you are great. Um, getting that reflect in there, but it sports a lot of time. Managed to get that Don Dozo down. Fortunately, uh, it looks like reflect is now coming off. So, um, what would be the most viable to come into now is the Mouse with the, the super effective moves. Um, I'm, I'm slightly dubious at are we going to be winning this speed matchup, but we, we're going to see how this one goes for us. So, I think, um, yes, uh, say. Probably going to be looking to get rid of the, the Tatsugiri primarily. So yeah, it's a glass cannon, but the Tatsugiri can definitely hit very hard um, when built right. So we're going to see how this one goes. Um, it's a good question, well, um, due to the fact that we know Brute Bonnet was running Spore, so actually you're going to look to uh, focus into the Brute Bonnet with that play rough. Hopefully we'll be taking the Brute Bonnet down and then we don't have to be worrying about the Spore. Um, yeah, it looks again, um, it looks to be the right placing as they've taken the Tatsugiri off the field, so that's quite fortunate for us. Uh, unfortunately, we're taking a sucker punch there, it's going to be taking quite a bit of damage um, onto the Drift Blim, and unfortunately, we didn't go for the Willow Wisp. I was questioning do we go for a Willow Wisp just to um, ensure a little bit of chip onto uh, the 
a touch of Geary over time and it would all look like that would have been a better play because putting a Willow Wisp onto the Miles Hole would have been better and unfortunately we're not going to be able to hit our move seeing as we're running a Ghost move into a normal type. Um, so yeah, uh, living to rule on their mistakes but um, hopefully it won't cost us too much. Um, so I think um, at this point it's probably best to be looking to focus into the Mouse Hold. Um, but again, still worried uh, the spore could be coming up on the brute bonnet if we do not manage to take it down. Um, so do do we look to yes, just take the the brute bonnet down, um, and hopefully that will ensure us in a better position, and then we can get a willow wisp into the mouse hold. I feel like this is probably the more beneficial play here. And so yes, um, if we run the willow wisp, that's going to mean the the sucker punch is um, null and void. It's not going to work. And then uh, that way, yes, uh, I think I felt confident going into that turn and we shouldn't be taking damage on the Drift Bloom. But it's just a question of uh, were they going to read us and know that we were probably going to be running a status move um, to protect ourselves from that Sucker Punch. But Population Bomb coming in now, I'm going to see hopefully Mouse is going to be able to survive this attack. But it's always questionable, but yes, managed to not take the 10 hits, so that is fantastic. And also the Burns be reducing the damage. Fortunately, our tailwind is going to come down now. Let's see, uh, is that going to put us in a uh, sticky position, or are we still going to be winning the speed matchup? So we're looking to play rough into the Tatsugiri. I say Tatsugiri does worry me a little bit, and I think we use Strength Sap into the the Mouse Hole, try and get a little bit of health back onto our Drift Blim. Um, and unfortunately, that's really gone against us. <laughs> Play rough. Uh, if, if for a 90% uh, hitting move, it hits far more times. Uh, so it hits more, it misses far more times than it should. I feel. Um, I felt great there, knowing that we just survived that population bomb. But unfortunately, the icy wind's going to come in and do enough chip damage onto the Mel Scarada, which is going to see us off, unfortunately. But strength sap coming into on the mouse hold, so attack coming down even further, and a nice heal up onto our drift blim. So I feel that's put us in a reasonable stead. Can we put up enough damage on the Drift Blim though to uh, sure out a victory? Um, I'm unsure on this one. We're going to be needing to take down uh, this Tatsugiri for sure uh, due to the fact that we're not going to be able to put an attack onto the mouse hold. However, I feel reasonably confident that if, as long as we can get the Tatsugiri off the field, Drift Blim stays up, um, we would be able to uh, see out the game just sort of strength sapping our, our, our way to the victory, healing up. But we're going to see how this one goes. Um, get the speed drop. Uh, this could uh, prove crucial near the end, but we'll see how it goes. Um, Tatsugiri taking a little bit of damage, not too much. Uh, the mouse holds straight down, which is fantastic. But we'll see, coming in with a shadow ball now, what sort of damage can Drifblim be putting out? Uh, uh, Drifblim, he's just got some fantastic animation animation I really like it was never a huge fan of Jeff Blim um, back in the days of Diamond and Pearl but I think that's probably because the uh, the issues I had as it playing against it as a kid it was always quite difficult but definitely enjoying it in this game definitely why I need to get in sh uh, shiny form so guys if you've got a spare shiny on Scarlet hook your brother up I've got some nice uh, shinies available to trade and on that note, keep uh, keep your eyes out, guys. Definitely be doing some shiny giveaways soon. Uh, so Icy Wind still winning that speed matchup. Woo! Just managed to survive on our Drift Blim. It's fantastic. I think we should be uh, seeing victory in this turn. And then, guys, whoa, two from two, 100% win rate victory at the moment. Can we keep it going into game three? We're, we're gonna see. We're gonna see, guys. But yeah, ah, I'm liking the team composition guys, I'm liking the team composition so far. And so jumping into game 3 now, which I have just about managed to record. Um, so yeah, leading in with uh, normal starters, which I say, for when it seems viable, um, I think it would be Drift Limb for Rigorif, where we can see fit. So looking to get a uh, Will-O-Wisp into the Coridon, try and cut its attack, that would be nice, and if we could get a Reflect up, even better. So Dragon Claw coming into the throw grab. Thought well, we should be surviving that attack, but taking a fair bit of damage. Um, that does look to be the case. But we managed to get our Willow Wisp off. Um, so yeah, 
feel fairly confident now um, Coridon is not going to be so much of an issue um, Reflect up, Toxic Spikes are going to be a slight bit of an issue for us um, if we switch into our Mouse Rada now we know it's Focus Sash is going to be broken and guys, um, unlike the first game I am actually running Mouse Rada in this game <laughs> Not messed up this time. I remember the Pokemon I brought, or at least three of them for sure. And I believe I'm going to be running fourth Golden Co. So, thinking, do we go for a Twin Beam now, or do we look to just try and get the Light Screen in where we can? So we're going to go for a Light Screen. Looks uh, Drain Punch coming in now. It looks like we're probably not going to be able to survive another one of those. Um, but if we can get Tailwind up now, potentially we can be attacking first next turn maybe get a twin beam off onto the Coridon and see a little bit of chip damage come in there. So we'll see how that play ends up going for us. Uh, looks to be a spike coming off from the fortress, so definitely an annoyance, but I don't think um, it's going to be too much of an issue for us. Uh, hopefully it's not running Explosion. At this point I am expecting to be fair Explosion potentially to be coming out. I think at this point um, is it best to be looking to go for an attack or do we look to go for a strength zap and ensure that if they get any damage onto our Pokemon um, we're putting out, we're getting a bit of heal but I think due to the Tailwind we're probably going to be attacking first and it does look to be the case so we're going to be trying to get an extra bit of chip damage in there and unfortunately we've managed to get the chip damage but our Phorograph is not going to be outspeeding the Coridon and unfortunately it should be going down and due to the Drain Punch the Coridon is going to be a little bit of health back it's a little bit unfortunate, and also uh, Stealth Rock come out, so we've got Spikes, Stealth Rock, and Toxic Spikes on the floor, so we're going to be taking a fair bit of damage coming into the field. Uh, yeah, this Fortress, you, you're definitely an annoyance, my friend. So, questioning, what is the more viable one to come into? Um, I think, yeah, I see, unfortunately this Sash can be broken on the Mouse Garada, but I think, at this point, uh, we're, we're going to opt for the, the Mouse Garada. So, we've come with the Mouse Garada, unfortunately taking damage from Poison Spikes, <laughs> Spikes, and the, uh, why do I forget the name of the last one? It's these stones, but um, yeah. So, we're going to be looking to uh, come in with a little bit of damage, and I would say, um, hopefully, if we put in Shadow Ball into fortress we're putting a nice bit of damage and I think yeah, we'll be out speeding the Coridon so hopefully a play rough is going to be putting out enough damage here to uh, get a finish but we're going to see how this one goes uh, so look to be switching out of there fortress seems to have done its job for now um, so it looks like coming in with Tinker's turn uh, unfortunately yeah I was uh, again opting do we go for a, a will-o-wisp um, it looks like case potentially should have got be going for a will-o-wisp into this play but again we'll, we'll accept a bit of chip damage um, it's never a bad thing we've at least broken a sash if it was sashed so that's a nice thing um, so we should hopefully be winning the speed battle in this next one um, so I think depending on what they come into oh so so it's a questionable one, but um, we've still got our play rough, so hopefully, hopefully we're still winning this speed uh, matchup. Our question is, um, are they running multi-scale on the Dragonite? Um, I know a lot of people opt to not run it on their Dragonite um, in doubles, but I say I've counted quite a few that do. To me, it looks like, yeah, it looks to be a multi-scale Dragonite. Um, we've gone for a Will-O-Wisp onto the Tinker Turn, just to try and make it not so much of an issue. Because the well, playoff could be a slight issue for us um, moving on in the game. And it's nice to cut a bit of damage there um, from the knockoff that we'll be taking. Um, so we've just seen an extreme speed from the Dragonite. So I'm thinking at this point, it's probably going to be looking to run extreme speed again to try and get a finish onto the Meowskarada, or at least put it into the threshold of dying off that poison. So I think what we're going to be doing is switching into the gimme ghoul um, and that should make uh, the, the Dragonite turn null and void but we're questioning would we do enough damage um, be out speeding it but with the tail one coming down I'm, I'm unsure so yeah let's let's go for the first play um, and move into the gimme ghoul um, and hope this gets enough for us and so we can see how this one plays out um, unfortunately we're taking damage from from the spikes and the poison and the stones but we'll not be taking any from the poison extreme speed coming in doesn't do any damage 200 iq baby knockoff coming in again but not too much damage 
Gonna get our tailwind back up and this should put us in reasonably good stead. Um hoping if we come in now with a make it rain, we should be hopefully taking down this Dragonite. But we see how this one goes for us. Uh say so very good start again. We managed to get a yeah, pretty good lead. Um I think we'd be going for a strength sap. Yeah, let's try and get a little bit of health back into our drift blim and um at any case this uh, Dragonite does stay up, we'll be cutting its attack even further. But fantastic, make it rain come in, managed to take two Pokemon down again. Gimme go, Mr. El Diablo he is broken. It, it's, it's what I say, they definitely need assessment, but it's hardly like Pokemon Hotfix the game, is it? It's not exactly uh, Dota. But right, was he uh, coming in Fortress, the last Pokemon? Um, pretty confident we're taking this one out. I'm not sure what its last attacking move is, but if it has an attacking move, um, I would imagine it was running an explosion. It's definitely not going to be any good for it, um, but we, we'll see how this one goes for us. Hopefully we'll be able to take it down um, and say 100% win rate from this challenge would be fantastic. But I say this is only part one. We will be coming. Ah. Why are you running? Why are you running? Well, our runner couldn't get there the last one, but and well, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, I've been Benediction Gamer aka okay, Poker Zebs, and that was the Poker Zebs Surprise Trade Challenge, Part 1. I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. And girls, if you've got any good suggestions for team compositions that you think I should run off the remaining Pokemon in the box, make sure to leave comments down below. Um, I'll make sure to check them out and make teams based on those ones. And uh, as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, and keep it holy, and I'll catch you in the next one.